Hello everybody, it is Thorn, and welcome back to our After Effects tutorial project Squid Grip. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this so far. Um, it's it's a long process. <laughs> I mean, these, these aren't just like uh, things that can happen like that. Um, but now what we're going to do is we're going to actually work on... Sorry, I'm trying to like adjust my chair. We're going to work on working with three layers. Um, now I did make an adjustment since you guys were gone. Um, I added a slight gradient to this so it goes from black to a, a dark gray. Uh, just a, a nice little touch that I like to do. Um, so now we have our logo sitting here and I decided that, you know what, maybe we wanted to do something a little bit more than just sitting there. So we're going to adjust its scale. It just adds a slight bit of motion and basically we're just going to scale it down just a tad. We're going to bring it all the way to the beginning. You won't even see the beginning of it, but you can see how it has that slight scale. It just kind of scales up just a little bit. Um, and then we're actually going to go to keyframe assist. Uh, right click on the keyframe. Go to keyframe assist. And then we'll go to ease in. Keyframe assist is at the bottom. Uh, it's actually probably getting cut off by the video, but it is there. So we're going to ease it so that it'll actually come to a slow stop. Um, and now this is just going to kind of sit here for a little bit and we'll have it sit on the screen for uh, about a second and a half. A second and a half is actually quite a bit of time, um, especially when it comes to video. And now what we're going to do is we want this to zoom at us. We want it to just zoom past us. So we're going to turn on our 3D layer. We have our uh, switches and layers into the actual switches. So we have it as a 3D layer now. <clears throat> and now what we want to adjust is its position. So we're going to toggle our keyframe right there. And now we're going to move forward, uh, we'll say about a second right now. And we want to adjust its Z position. As you can see, as I'm moving it forward and back, it's kind of pushing forward and back. So we're going we're gonna to go super, super negative so that it gets past the screen. We don't want it to go too far. We want it to literally just like pop and then be gone. So it's gone. So that's what our motion is going to be. It's just going to zoom in. Uh, and now you'll notice that it starts creating a pixelation. Now, normally, when you're doing something like this, you don't want to do this with rasterized objects, which would be like a PNG. You would rather do this with um, Illustrator documents which are vectorized in which case we can turn on the rasterization or the continuous raster uh, we don't want to do that that turns on anti-aliasing and it's makes it really gross uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn on our motion blur so now with our motion blur on just that single layer we'll actually turn it on for the entire scene this will ena enable it for the entire scene and now it creates that that slight blur around the outside so it makes it makes the pixelation a little less noticeable. And then also on top of this motion, we're going to adjust its transparency because we don't want it to actually pop at the screen. We want it to eventually just fade out. So we're about four seconds in. And we're going to turn on a keyframe for transparency. Uh, and then we're going to go to the point where it actually disappears. And we're going to drop it all the way down to zero. So it'll actually disappear before we need it to. As you guys can see, it's starting to disappear. Um, this is just doing like a, an adaptive resolution. So it's actually making it look worse because it actually doesn't know what's going on with the actual scene itself. But it'll start to actually disappear and it'll actually be gone eventually. So that's kind of how we're going to open this all up. Um, I would... I would uh, RAM preview it, but it's probably going to take a while. My computer's not that great. My fans are already starting to go because this is a little more than my computer is used to actually doing. Um, another thing that we're actually going to do real quick, because we, we just talked about motion blur and stuff like that, we're going to turn on the motion blur for the other layers that are going past. So you'll notice that the, the stroke doesn't like to play well, and that's just because of um, it being a layer adjustment as opposed to a layer of its own so that's totally fine that it does that uh, I, don't, I actually don't mind that one bit I think it creates a nice contrast so we're we had that swoop past and stuff blah 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 you know 
the same stuff as normal. Um, the next portion that we're actually going to deal with is we're going to bring in our actual video. This is going to be our simple steps. Um, I haven't actually watched this video, it's quite long. So we're just going to go in and we're going to take little bits and pieces. So we have our video. Um, we want to actually just take a portion where they're putting it on. So as you can see, he's starting, he's got the controller ready. So we'll do option and then the left bracket. It's the one right next to P. And that'll actually shorten our clip up. So we only want this little port. We only want from there and on. And then we'll move forward to about... We'll go to we'll go to about 11 seconds. We'll go to 11 seconds, and then we'll hit the close bracket. And now what the close bracket is doing is basically now it's just saying we're only going to use this portion out of the entire video. Uh, now we're going to duplicate this layer. Uh, no, we're not. We're not going to duplicate it yet. Basically, we're gonna we're gonna find our position that we want this to actually go in, so that we can actually fit three separate videos. Because I think it's actually three simple, easy steps. So one is actually lining up the edge to the actual controller edge. And then I think the next step is actually like folding one end down and folding the other end and then and then you're done. Um, so what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna scale this down just a little bit and we're gonna put it in the position that we want it to be in. Um, I think we're gonna bring it over here and we're going to eventually bring back in our things that we swiped over. We're gonna bring it back in and these are gonna be on the side. So we're going to scale this down so that we can fit three videos evenly. So we'll duplicate it and we'll just see what it looks like. And we'll duplicate it again. Um, and we'll try and get the spacing between them all just right. So we're going to have to, I think we're going to have to scale this down just a little bit more. Uh, we'll scale it down to, we'll scale it down to 60%. And now we'll shift and move, select them all, and we'll get them nice and even in the composition so that we create a nice framing, basically. So now we have our three separate videos, but we want to actually grab a different part of this video. An easy way to actually do this, when you have the layer selected, when you put it over the area that's not being used anymore, it brings up this bar that has the two arrows. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to click and drag. And what it's going to do is it's actually going to play the video and we can scrub it through. So now we'll find a different portion. Um, we'll wait until he finishes that up. Click and drag again. So now he's got his one piece done. And now he's going to start his next process. So we'll actually go to the beginning so that we can get it to match up with that piece. So he has his first step done. And now he's going to start his second step, which is actually folding it onto it, folding the bottom down. Um, we'll probably eventually um, end up scaling these up. But for right now, that's what, that's what we're going to be using. Uh, we're going to duplicate that one because we want that same time frame. And now we're going to put it down here so that it's at the next one. We'll get rid of that other one. That was just a placeholder. And now we'll actually fast forward, keep fast forwarding until he gets his bottom done. And now that he's got his bottom done, like so, he's gonna start doing the top. Uh, and now we're actually gonna get it to match up so that he's about to do the top. Which, that looks about right. So now all three of these actions are going on at the same time and you can actually sit here and follow it step by step if you really wanted to, but that's not what we're here to do, guys. It's not what we're here to do. So we're gonna we're actually gonna extend these we're gonna extend these out a little bit. And then we'll we'll be able to put information on the left hand side in a little bit. But for right now we're gonna do this and we're gonna bring our layers back in. So we have our position keyframes on our actual masks. So we'll toggle the keyframe again. So that's where they are. Uh, we'll go right here. We'll select these and move them back over. 
and move forward about a second, maybe a little bit less. And now we have to actually select our masks. So we want this mask to come over like so. And we also want our other mask to come over so that it creates a nice little border for us. Like so. And then we will actually ease these so that it comes in and stops. It comes in and stops nicely. So we'll ease that in. And now we have our little next section done after we now are going to adjust the position keyframes on our actual video. So that's where the video is right now. We're going to move this over so that it is going to be at this position when that's actually done, when the other stuff is actually done coming in. And now we're going to just bring them over. And now it should actually come in at the same rate. Uh, we probably need to move them over just a tad bit more. Actually, the bottom one's fine. The bottom one's fine. It's these top two. Oop. It's the top two that need to be moved over just a tad. And then this one needs to be moved over just a tad more. And now they should actually come in at the right rate. Yeah, they're, st they're still close. They're close. So something that we can do to fix this we can see where they are right now on the actual screen. We'll just start moving this over pixel by or frame by frame until it actually matches up correctly. Like so. Like so. So now we're going to turn on our motion blur on those videos just so that they, they come in appropriately. Um, and there we have it. We have our next little section of our video. They're sitting there basically applying the squid grip to a controller, showing people how it's done on the left hand side. On the next video, we'll be adding in some information. We'll animate that coming in so that we actually create our small advertisement. This is like our um, call to action kind of section. And then we'll be closing off the video with a little uh, a little outro. So anyways, I hope that you guys enjoyed this so far. And oh yeah, we got to remember, always save. Command S, everybody. Save your projects. Never forget to save. So I'll see you guys next time.